Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Yes. You make me feel alive. I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. Broadcasting live from the UBN studios in Hollywood, California. Well, actually calling into Hollywood from his own little corner of Northeast Ohio. It's the Left of Straight Show with your host, Scott Fullerton. Join us for fun talk and celebrity interviews, exploring the worlds of entertainment, foodies, and books. He's not off his rocker, just a little Left of Straight. Now, here's your host, Scott Fullerton. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Left of Straight Show. It is Monday, March 28th. I can't believe there's only three more days left until we're in April. Hey, Jarvis, how you doing out there in Hollywood land? Hey, I'm doing great. Hollywood is, is it's good. <laughs> Super duper. Another great week. Another great show today. Oh, I can't wait to talk to these two guys. We have Ronnie Kroll and Eddie Lobo from Friend Movement, and they're starting their own Ronnie and Eddie show. Show. It's going to be a fantastic show. I just started learning about them recently, and they are so much fun that we're going to have a great show in just a little bit here. Lots to talk about. First off, how was your Easter? Do you have a happy Easter, Jarvis? I did. I did. I uh, got a chance to visit with some friends and uh, family, good food, and uh, it was good. It was The weather was nice, so can't complain. How was yours? It was pretty good. It was interesting. We'll put it that way. Uh -oh. it, was a, it was a beautiful day in Ohio. Believe it or not, we were at 77 degrees and oh. lots of sunshine yesterday. Look, it was warmer there than it was here. <laughs> uh, there you go. See, so I'm loving that. We had a great uh, day. Now, as far as Easter goes, my, just my mom and I anymore, since dad passed away last year, and we don't have that many relatives close by. So just my mom and myself, and we didn't want to go drive up down to South Carolina to my brothers and my other brother lives out by you in Ventura, California. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so just us and we're not that religious. So we decided we were going to go to the casino yesterday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And that was the biggest mistake we probably oh. could have made. It, well, it's sad. This, what's, what's happening? We're redoing the house a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So we're painting the upstairs living room, hall, kitchen, getting new carpeting for the living room and hall and getting some new furniture for the living room. So the painting started this week. It started Thursday. So they're painting Thursday and Friday. You know how it gets all smelly in the house and everything? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we thought Saturday we'll, we'll get let the house air out a bit, open the windows. And it was kind of nicer Saturday too. So we went to the casino Saturday and thought we'd play around, and we did really good. We stayed there for like six hours, and we came up like $100 ahead, which is not a lot, but it's better than losing, right? right? Yeah. So then Sunday, we were going to go out to eat or do something, and we decided, well, let's go to the casino again since we won last time. We went to different <laughs> casinos this time and totally lost our butts. Right. We, we should have bought more furniture for the house. I'm telling you this. It was so bad. It just Every time we turned around, we could not uh, make a dime to save our life. But we had a good Easter overall. We had a yeah, good time. Yeah. But then, see, that's the key. You have to you have to leave it alone when you're ahead. No matter, even if it's $100, you're ahead. So just, exactly. just let it go. That's what we said the entire drive home. You're right. It was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we got a couple things in the news we'll talk about before we get uh, Eddie and uh, Ronnie on here. Um, first off, breaking news happening just a couple of hours ago. Governor Nathan Deal of Georgia just vetoed the LGBT discrimination bill that was passed through the uh, state legislature there. So it's a big deal. It's been talked about a lot the past couple of weeks. Um, the LGBT legislature is one of those freedom of religion things where anyone can discriminate against anyone based on their religious preference, uh, basically against the LGBT community. And uh, they went ahead and the governor decided to veto. They had a lot of pressure. Disney and Marvel and a lot of companies were putting a lot 
but apparently they're going to pull business out. And in fact, two companies did pull their businesses out. They were doing some economic development deals with the state to a huge problem. They did pull out because of it. Mm. So the governor today vetoed the legislation. So that's great news in Georgia. Yeah. He kind of was good about the way he talked about it, though, Jarvis, but he did kind of – his reasoning was there's no need for it in Georgia because those things that have happened in other states have never happened that he knows of. And that the other reasons people got sued and like the, you heard about the cake baker in Oregon and all these yes. places, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, he said the reason they got sued because there was discrimination laws in place that stopped them uh, – that, that helped them win the suit – well, he says, we don't have any of those kind of laws in Georgia, so that can't happen here. So basically he's saying it's a good thing we don't protect gays. That way we don't have to pass this law because you can't get sued anyway. Mm. So it's kind of a backhanded compliment as far as I was concerned. Exactly, yeah. But I'm just real happy that they did veto it. Um, as we know, last week North Carolina um, pushed through legislature really fast last Wednesday and Thursday um, to – reverse the non-discrimination LGBT clause that Charlotte had passed. Charlotte had passed a, a protections for LGBT uh, for the city. And then last Wednesday, the legislature threw together an executive session to override the bill and the governor signed it right away, basically saying that no city laws can uh, be passed without the state law's approval. So the state is now discriminating against LGBT. No matter what cities, and it turned over. I think there's like eight cities already: Raleigh and a couple other ones in North Carolina. So they're getting a lot of blowback now from a lot of business communities, and like Apple, the NBA, Google, a lot of people doing business in North Carolina are kind of threatening to pull out now because of this bill that's already been passed. So wow. Wow. that was kind of interesting. We have to do a quick shout out too today. UBN Radio, I'm so happy to be in UBN Radio, and Tony Sweet's been so good at helping our radio through. Um, we've had, he's been working this deal for a while now to get some of our shows on iHeartRadio, and today we got word that 18 of our 40-something shows have got approved. The rest are still in transition. There's a bunch of hoops you have to jump through. Um, so I definitely want to congratulate our good friend Alexander Rodriguez for On the Rock Show, Del Shores and Emerson Collins for The Dell and Emerson Show, Ann Walker and Scott Nevins for the Ann Walker Show. Um, Alec uh, Mappa and Capernia Adams for Nooner. And uh, Pandora Box, the Pandora Box Show. So we, they're all going to be available for streaming on iHeartRadio very soon, along with another uh, 12 other things that the station has. So congratulations to all of them. That deserves one of our little applause things. So. <laughs> Woohoo! 18 shows. That's fantastic. So hopefully, if you can't, if you want to write our heart radio and tell them to approve left or straight, I would appreciate it. I'm not approved yet, but it's still pending. So fingers crossed, everybody out there. Last thing I'm going to go to before we go to our um, video today of our first two guests. Um, there's a cool video that I just posted on Facebook. If you follow me on Facebook, it's Scott Fullerton, and it'll also be linked on at left of straight on Twitter. Um, there's a new video out. Um, you guys know I love So You Think It Can Dance. I watched that show all summer long. Have you ever seen that show, Jarvis? Yes, I have. I love that show. You don't even understand. Well, it's a great show, and two of my favorite dancers were with Kent and Neil, same-sex partnering, um, that just happened to turn out, and they had two of the best dances on any of the seasons of So You Think It Can Dance. Right now, if you go to my website, you can check out a video that's making the rounds right now on So You um, – Italy's Got Talent kind of like America's Got Talent. They have the Italy's Got Talent, right? Mm -hmm. They have a young couple there that does an interpretive dance and comes out of gay at the end. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It's a fantastic video. And I just put it up on my website, so be sure to look for that. And it should be, uh, it's just amazing. These guys are great. It's in Italian, so you can't understand a darn word they're saying. <laughs> okay. But it just looks really good. <laughs> All right, Jarvis. Well, I'm so excited. In just a couple of moments, we're going to have the fantastic Ronnie Crawl and Eddie Lobo. If you want to go ahead and queue up their video, they're starting their own um, show called The Ronnie and Eddie Show. They put together a fundraiser that I was very proud to donate to and put through my little – got my little T-shirt coming. 
and they put a great promotion video together for it. It's going to be a la Laverne and Shirley, which is how they did the promo for it. Um, if you want to go ahead and play that, we'll be back in just a couple of seconds with Ron and Eddie. This is Scott Fullerton on the Left of Straight Show. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Shlamiel, shlamazo, friend movements motivated. We're gonna do it. Give us any chance, we'll take it. With us any rule, we'll break it. We're gonna make our dreams come true. Do it our way. Nothing's gonna Hi, this is Eddie. And I'm Ronnie, and, and we're, together... We're, we're the Ronnie and Eddie Ronnie Show. And Eddie Show. Some of you may know me as a model, as an actor, but the most important thing right now in my life is making a difference. You know, in order to go after your goals, you have to have the courage, and we want to try to instill people to have that courage. Uh, especially in Hollywood. Hollywood has become such a jaded city where all we look at is what we see on the outside. But a lot of times those things on the outside, as pretty as they may be, may not be so great on the inside. So what we want to try to do is we want to try to take the inside, match it with the outside, combine it together for a recipe that creates a really wonderful human being. We're not trying to recreate the wheel. We're simply trying to let people know that it still rolls. I'm so excited about the Ronnie and Eddie show. It's going to be kind of like a modern day version of Laverne and Shirley. We realize that if you look back on Laverne and Shirley, it's not just a funny show. It's a show about friendship. It's about two individuals that are so bonded in friendship. They're there for each other through the struggle. They're there for each other for the triumph. And the messaging behind the show is really about celebrating friendships. It's about overcoming obstacles and it's about following your dreams no matter what they are. In order to bring this great concept to you, we're gonna need your help. We want to produce the Ronnie and Eddie show with all of you. We need your dedication and we need your dollars to bring Ronnie and Eddie to life. We just need $15,000 to create a very awesome sizzle reel and first episode to then go in and take network meetings. And we want you to be a part of that. We're going to be bringing Ronnie and Eddie to your home. You're going to be able to watch a show that is not only going to be entertaining, but it is going to inspire you to go after your dreams too. That's what we're going to bring to you. We're going to bring you a feel-good show with a little bit of comedy, a little bit of drama, but all of it is authentic and it's honest. You're gonna see the work of friend movement in the community making a difference, and you're gonna see us going through all the smoke and mirror behind the scenes of Hollywood firsthand, and you're gonna see us struggling to make our dream come to life. Help us get this project going and be with us every step of the way because in the end, we're all friends. And thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you and we appreciate you. Oh my God, I love, love, love these guys. You don't even know. Jarvis, do we have both of them on the phone? Yes, we do. Terrific. Well, let's go ahead and let me take a big breath here because i got a big introduction of two people here. First, I'm so happy today we have Ronnie Kroll, an actor, model, co-creator of Friend Movement, an organization that is empowering and supporting people to accept and to be their own true selves. He was a fan favorite and runner-up on Bravo's highly successful Make Me a Supermodel and has modeled for most of the famous designers that are out there ever since. He's also transitioned to acting and has appeared in many films and television shows, including the recent first season of Swimsuit Centerfold and currently in pre-production that we just showed you, the Ronnie and Eddie show. 
Eddie Lobo is also known as Laughing Eddie, and he came from a family of artists and early on started performing in shows at Disneyland and local musical theater. He soon learned he had a huge talent for comedy and he started doing stand-up and had just never looked back. From comedy clubs to being a sought-after host for events and pageants, he eventually came to Hollywood and began working in his film and television career as well. Together, he is the other co-creator of Friend Movement, also part of Swimsuit Centerfold and the Ronnie and Eddie show, and I am so excited to have them there. So please welcome to the Left of Straight show, Ronnie and Eddie. Hey, guys. Hey, Scott. How are you? I am doing, I'm doing fantastic, gentlemen. I'm so happy to have you guys on. I just can't even tell you. I mean, I, I'm being the good gay boy that I am. I saw you, Ronnie, of course, and make me a supermodel. But I didn't really follow too much or anything afterwards. And then I see you and Eddie and our good friend Alexander show on the rocks and learn all about friend movement. It's like, oh, my God, I got to have these guys on here. I read everything uh-huh. about you guys. I've just fallen in love. Aw, oh, thank you. Aw, oh, well, thank you. We love Alexander, too. He's he's a great guy, and it was so much fun to be on the show. And, and when we when you reached out to us, how could we say no? We want, we, we love, we, I listened to your show, and I uh, actually have to ask you how your mom is doing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Show. She's doing okay. She actually, she had a little fall, and she's uh, she's recovered. She didn't break anything thank goodness at 77 just kind of bruised but she was good enough like i i don't know if you heard the earlier part of the show but our easter consisted of taking her out to the casino where she proceeded to lose a couple of hundred dollars so she's doing great. oh she's a woman <laughs> after my own heart she's a oh, woman God. after my own heart what does she play <laughs> oh, she, she, she likes all the classic games she likes all the ones with the bars and the sevens and stuff i have to have the fun games where you can win a bonus or something but she likes classic oh fun no. Well, I just want to say come to Youngstown and that's, go that's, hang out with you and Mom. There you yeah, go. That, that's wrong. We can't take him too close to the casino. He loves to, he loves the casino. Oh my goodness! Well, I, I unfortunately have to say I do too. But I'm so excited to have you guys. I want to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. We're definitely going to get to friend movement later. We get to the Ronnie and Eddie show. But I always like the first time on the show to kind of get to know everyone a little bit. Let's go ahead and start with you first, Ronnie. Let's talk about. Some background. You grew up in Chicago. You got on that reality show, Make Me a Supermodel. How did all that happen? And what was kind of the first taste of reality fame like? Did being openly gay and out and proud kind of help or hinder the outside perception there? Well, yeah, born and raised in Chicago. Uh, I take pride in my Midwestern roots. Uh, I, I love my family. They're all still back there. I have a great support system and all my friends there. Uh, you know, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a model. Um, I got my start because my best friend at the time, his mother, um, was working for Victor Skrebnesky, who is a world-renowned uh, fashion photographer. And I would actually go over to his mom's house, um, who, we would, who we would check in uh, on because uh, she was ill. And I would page through his, his portfolios, and I just fell in love with the industry. And I, you know, was this prepubescent, you know, pimple face kid, you know, that wanted to be a model one day. And, you know, my best friend's mom was like, you can be anything you want to be as long as you put your mind to it. And those words really have stuck with me to this day. And she's still supporting me to this day and always reminding me of that kid, you know, that she talked to and inspired years ago. Um, But as far as supermodel goes, you know, I had an agent at the time. Uh, I was with Elite Model Management, and I was also, you know, looking for my own work, too. So, uh, you know, there's always Craigslist, right? <laughs> so I was sitting there, you know, having my, my cup of coffee and, you know, scrolling through the, 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 uh, the gig section on Craigslist, and there it was. It said, casting today for a new, new TV show, uh, Models Wanted. So I said, what do I have to lose? I went downtown Chicago I did my little catwalk, did my little turn on the catwalk, talked to the producers, and a couple months later, before I knew it, I was competing in New York and having the experience of a lifetime, quite frankly. Congratulations, Ben. That's awesome. And then you were actually the first openly gay man to be featured on Playgirls Centerfold. That had to be a little freaky. Tell me about how that came about. (laughs) 
Well, to be honest with you, uh, it was not on my radar of things to do uh, in my lifetime. It, was, it wasn't on the bucket list. <laughs> but not long after I shot Supermodel, um, Daniel Nardiccio, who uh, was uh, looking out for like their PR and was kind of helping them in several different capacities, he had reached out and they had made an offer, and they were wondering if I would, if I would do it. Um, the only caveat was, uh, I think Levi Johnson, uh, Sarah Palin's, uh, son in law, uh, did it, but then he kind of reneged on the, uh, the full frontal nudity. And so the only way I was able to, uh, be a part of that was if I said yes to that. Um, so I'd be remiss if I didn't say it took some time. It took six months to get to yes. Uh, and I thought about it long and hard. And I asked a lot of my friends and my family, and I'm like, you know, what do you think about this? And, you know, it was interesting. I had a good, you know, 75% of them say, you know what? You know, life is short. If that's something you want to experience, go for it. And, you know, there's always the naysayers. You know, everyone has an opinion, and they were always, you know, I just was looking for perspective. And at the end of the day, I was like, you know, I think this is a really great opportunity not only to explore myself as an artist, as a model, but as a political scientist, and outside of just the photo spread being something I'm very proud of, one of the things that I tried to communicate with that spread was the importance of dropping your labels, you know, whether those right. be designer brand labels or the, the labels we wear when we go into the office, whatever our titles are. You know, when you show up in the world, you know, all of us are beautifully vulnerable human beings when you strip the clothes away. You know, matter, no matter what shape, size, you know, what you look like, what color your skin is, what age you are, um, you know, we're all beautiful. And the human body and sexuality and sex is not something that I think we should be afraid of. So I really, I'm grateful for the experience uh, to this day very That's much. That's great, man. You should definitely do it when you're young. I think Eddie and I missed our opportunity, right, man? <laughs> oh, no, actually. Oh, Eddie's planning first. on it. Was, we're, we're working was, him out. Uh, oh, yeah. No, it's coming up. I'm in the 50s plus. But actually, I was <laughs> the first openly gay man to ever pose nude in horse and hound. So. Oh, there you go. See? Everyone <laughs> has a title but me. It always works out that way. I hate when that happens. <laughs> No, well, no, actually, I'm working on that right now as I'm as I'm building up my body and, and dropping weight. So, well, I'm following you guys on that. I think that's awesome. The challenge that you guys are taking—that's something that I need. I need someone to kind of. I'm a big guy. I mean, I'm bigger than you, Eddie, to tell you the truth. And it's like, I, you, you need that partnership, and that's one of the things I love. I see you guys going to the gym together, and him motivating you, and him frustrating you, and you working your butt. And I think that's just important. I think that's awesome. But let's get a little bit of your past now, Eddie. You started out now. I'm guessing you were maybe a California guy because you worked at Disneyland and all of that. Tell me about your growing up and you had a mom that was an actress and a dad and grandfather musician. Did you kind of rebel against entertainment at first or did you just take to it like a duck? Well, it's very interesting. Uh, I, I was born and raised in Orange County and okay. both, my, both my parents uh, well, my whole family, uh, 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 my grandfather was a, a, a saxophonist and an entertainer. Uh, he played with Louis Prima um, and Keely Smith back in the day. And then my father was a drummer, and, and he played nice. with a variety of different bands. But uh, the biggest one was with the Righteous Brothers. He played with them. And then my mother was an actress. And it was just not something I really wanted to get into. But when I got into junior high, I started... Uh, uh, with the drama club and then into high school and did plays like uh, uh, West Side Story and Little Abner in Oklahoma. So nice. I, I got kind of the bug, but it still wasn't something I really wanted to do. And then years after I was out of high school, it was actually my high school uh, or my junior high school teacher. She was my Spanish teacher that always thought I was just hysterical. And, <laughs> um, had asked me if uh, she goes, I heard about this um, competition in Orange County called uh, Orange County's Funniest Person Contest. And she goes, I think you'd be great. And I'm like, are you crazy? I'm just not going to get up there and do that. <laughs> so I had a couple people help me out a little bit. And I went up there and it was six areas of competition over a period of six weeks. And with being a novice and never doing it before, 
I nailed the first three rounds for the first three weeks. And then in the fourth week, um, actually uh, bowed out against some really heavy hitters in the comedy world that it, to me, it wasn't a loss as much as it was an honor to be right. up against these people and to get to that point. And I really found that I really enjoyed being on stage, which was really interesting. And that was the thing that I had been told is one of the biggest areas of um, uh, problems for a lot of people on stage, especially you know comedians, is taking command of the stage and being confident on it. And it was something I really enjoyed. And so I did that for a while, and then I have um, some high school friends, uh, John Pardee, uh, who's uh, done various, he's written a, a, a great deal of shows and, and then been executive producer on a few of them. And then my other friend, Terry Douglas, who um, uh, is voiceover and owns a loop troupe. And between the two of them, they were constantly bugging me about television. I'm like, nah, I saw what my mom did, I'm not interested. I mean, I kind of grew up uh, seeing people like Dinah Shore and, and Jack Albertson and, you know, going to celebrity golf things with my mom and having to tell everybody she was my sister. But um, <laughs> <laughs> she said, don't tell me you're my son. But, um, <laughs> you know, it just didn't seem like something I really wanted to be in. And my friend John had been on a variety of different shows from Sybil to the Jeff Foxworthy show. And at one time they had the five Mrs. Buchanan's and Wings and and he kept saying, God, try it, try it. And I'm like, I don't want to do it. So he goes, listen, we've got this really great show. We're going to start filming it. Just do me a favor and try it. He goes, either you're going to love it or you're going to hate it, but just give it a shot. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I took some time off of work and we went up and we shot it. And it turned out to be picked up and it was a huge hit. It was Desperate Housewives. Oh, and my goodness. So um, at that time, I was really heavy. And I had had the opportunity to know Mark Cherry and um, Joey Murphy and John. So uh, I got to watch the rushes and I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm like this massive mound of flesh. (laughs) I'm like, I look huge. And at the time I was over 400 pounds. And so um, I made a commitment to myself to try to start reducing my weight. But it had been kind of a struggle. And then in 2007, after taking... Um, some classes and and working with some private instructors, I decided, you know what, I'm going to make the plunge. So I gave up uh, my 18 year, almost 20 year career in the corporate field and made the transition into television. And of course I had, I was at the time working on Desperate Housewives and then um, also doing some work on ER and so, and house. So I had a regular schedule. I was very fortunate to be, working and then of course be uh, part of SAG and after at the time. So I was able to make a living, not what I made before. So I really had to learn to cut back, right. but I was able to do it. And um, it was, it was a really great experience and, and I enjoyed it. And then um, got together, you know, Ronnie and I have known each other for quite a few years, both of us working on our shows at the time. And um he just kind of inspired me. I told him, I said, I really want to do this and I really want to do that. And, but I really want to do something with health and fitness. And um, he'd say, well, let's go to the gym. And I'd have an excuse every time. And, and that doesn't really work with Ronnie Kroll. Uh, if you ask him to help you with something, you best better do it because he's ready to rock and roll. And he, and he inspired awesome. me and um, we got in there and we started on it. And to date, I've lost about 230 pounds. Good for you, so, man. Yeah. And he's been, uh, he's, he's my greatest champion, my buddy, my best friend. If it's, uh, you know, um, the, the best part about the whole thing is, is um, I always felt I was really good with excuses that I could sidestep. And he's the one individual that I'm still trying to figure out where my niche is because I still can't get one up on himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's very you can call cool. me out like a rug every time. Well, I know. I talk about your longtime friendship. I think I list. I, I try to do as much research as I can. I think I saw one interview. You guys met each other on MySpace. Now that's got to be a yeah. little couple years back there. That's crazy. Oh yeah, that was way back. And I'm not sure, Eddie. I can't. I don't remember. I'm going to have to have you tell me what your act was. But I'm one of the weird people that's opposite of Ronnie. I actually was born and raised in Southern California and lived there for 29 years. Love the entertainment area. Love look. 
I lived in Huntington Beach and Ventura and West Covina there. And ended up moving back here to Northeast Ohio, like a silly person, about 15 years ago. Uh, but right before I moved back here, I am almost swear I saw you at the Ice House. What was your act like when you were at the Ice House? Yes, it was. That was my, my when I first started. Um, one of the most successful shows I had was the Ice House. And my show was called The World According to Eddie. And it was. Okay, you know, it was. I saw you. doing. Yeah, I would just started doing weight loss, and there was a whole episode or a, a part about going to the gym because I just started going. I just signed with the gym. As a matter of fact, at the time, it was called Family Fitness. It wasn't 24-hour fitness. That's how far back that goes. <laughs> and uh, there's a segment on wave runners and um, having personal trainers and all that great stuff. Yeah, that was my 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 first my first really big. Uh, comedy store with the ice house i was there at the ice house for a year that's funny i can't i, I really didn't see there. that oh, i remember God. that that is so oh, funny wow. that's awesome yeah i was a hit at the ice house i, I did really <laughs> well up there i loved it all right let's go first i want to talk for a set real quick um talk to ronnie for a second i was reading your on sure. your website you have some great poetry some great writing uh i actually i just pre-taped a show today for my thursday i do a thursday show on uh, that I have to have you two guys on very soon. It's called Healing Stigma on Left of Straight Radio. We talk about different ways of st how stigma comes on you through bullying, through um, weight, through all sorts of different areas. And you guys would be a great guest for that. But we did a interview today with the actual Poet Laureate of Connecticut and this girl from Poet Mass. And I got to tell you, Ronnie, I think I love your poems and then your blog the other day about making you believe what I believe was fantastic and powerful. Um, tell me how both you guys kind of had coming into your own on that. Do you, do you feel that way as well, Eddie? First talk to me where that came from, Ronnie, and then Eddie, tell me if you're kind of in the same place. Well, I think the journey of an artist is a very interesting one, and it's not an easy path to follow because so many times the not in our in our society, when you're an artist, people that don't get artistry will tell you, go get a real job, you know. And right. art is, in my opinion, a very real job. And it also, it, it pains me when I see that, you know, schools cut the arts first or art programming and things. These are all going out the window these days. And Art is, is a means of expression. Art is a tool and a vehicle by which we explore who we are and we figure that out. And, and I think artists are the ones that shape hearts and minds. You know, uh, art is so, so important and vital to our communities. Um, as an artist myself and trying to um, express myself and share my story, you know, I'm trying to find the right vehicle and the right medium to do that. You know, for so long it was modeling. Um, right. I really enjoyed that. I really, really did. Um, but I got bit by the acting bug. And it's interesting because in the probably four, five, about five or six years now that I've been really committed to acting, I'm always learning something new. I'm always taking a different class. I'm always you know, being challenged to, to, to peel back the onion layers and dive deeper into myself. And that's not an easy thing to do. It's really scary. Right. Um, because that means all the things that I've swept under the rug and pretended weren't there, they're still there. <laughs> and I still have to kind of feel through them if I'm going to be an effective actor because an effective actor really brings themselves to the table. I think a lot of times in acting we show up or we have this preconceived notion, I'm acting now and I'm using my actor voice, you know, <laughs> but it's not really that way. And I think Meryl right. Streep says it best, and I'll paraphrase it, in acting, um, when you're reading a script and you're studying a character, find the things that are apparently different from you and find yourself there. Because there's always a way for you, even in the most absurd situations that you may think, like I just had to play Norman, Norman Bates from Psycho in my acting class last month. And, you know, he stuffs birds for a living. I'm like, I don't stuff birds for, a, you know, <laughs> and that's not my hobby. But I was like, well, what's the, the closest hobby I have? You know, I collect coins or I collect sports cards. 
at any rate, you know, making you believe I believe, I have to just organically come to the table and trust the process as an artist and, and, and have fun with it. If I'm not having fun and I'm not believing it, then the person watching it, you know, isn't going to believe it either. So the work really begins with you. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you have that belief because I, I think that's so important. And Eddie, Ed, you feel the same way now, too? It sounds like you're getting you're really confident with everything that's going on as well. Actually, it's very interesting because um, one of the the biggest challenges I've always had now through comedy, I could be whatever character I want because right. I control the stage. Um, I, you know, what people don't realize, and of course people have heard this, is comedy is really almost like a tool for therapy. And some of your best comedians are often ones that come from either damaged homes, uh, problems in their lives. And I'm not saying all comedians are like that, but a, a lot of them, we use right, the definitely. stage for our therapy. And for me, um, un until actually uh, being part of Friend Movement and also, you know, with the help of my brother and friend Ronnie, um, up until a certain part, we were just talking about this too, I've always had a certain idea of what I wanted people to see. Right. I created an image for myself. And um, this image is only great things. I'm, you know, I remember back people always saying, um, God, you're never in a bad mood, man, you're always so much fun. Because anytime I was having a bad time or there was something wrong, I pulled away from society because that was not something I wanted people to see because I got to a point where I didn't trust people because I found I, I, I was cultivating the wrong kinds of people to be around me. And because of fear and issues and refusal to address and, 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 and try to understand what I was going through, I just kept surrounding myself and making myself a victim and everything. So in order to not be the victim, I just took myself out of that scenario. So nobody ever saw anything but the happy-go-lucky Eddie. Right. And um, since these last, what, 10 years, slowly but surely, I've allowed that, as Ronnie said, to start peeling back the onion and start seeing that I'm just as normal and just as human as the next person. And I always thought that would be a bad thing for people to see, but especially given the company that we have and what we're trying to do, we have found so many people that are absolutely relieved that because they see us on this other side of, wow, these guys are doing all this great stuff and they're this and they're that. And then when they see the humanity and, and the fact that we, that we do have, that we bleed like everybody else and we have issues like everybody else, it makes it easier for people to understand and actually come over to us and, and work with us or be a part of our programs. And there's something to be said about that. And, and I know exactly. for me, it's been a huge transition, especially being a 50, you hear that, Ronnie, 52 year old <laughs> man. My business partner seems to think that I'm 40 years older than he is, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm only 20. <laughs> That's in an interview too. But, I did see um, that interview. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Uh, so being, um, being at my age and uh, being out of a 22 year relationship and all these transitions and changes and everything, uh, it's been difficult, but, and then a body transformation and everything else. But the key factor is finding yourself a, a really great core base right. um, and, and a great foundation. And I've, I've been very fortunate to have that in my friends and especially in, in my best friend, Ronnie and, um, and, and my friend, even my ex, Steve, we were still very good friends. But the entertainment industry, I really think, um, and, and the arts programs, they're so important to help you open up those areas in your mind and, and, and develop the talents that we have. And, and there's something to be said about really doing something really great, something you're really good at that, that is different. Because even though we, we may all be actors, we're all different. Or we may all exactly. be painters, we're all different. And there's something to be said about putting your mark on something and it, and it being yours. It, it feels good. That is awesome. Well, we're going to have to move along quickly. I, can't, oh, I hate this one-hour show. I have my two 
two-hour show on Tuesday. We're going to have to get you back on. But let's move ahead. Like We have people in the chat room, and they just people are wondering how you guys sleep with all you do. So let's get into some of this. Let's start with friend movement. I love this. Your motto is have a friendly day. Your mission statement, as I said in the opening, supporting and empowering people to accept and be their true selves. I love. Core values are forgiveness, respect, inspiration, education, nurturing, and dreaming. I can't tell you how much I love what you guys are doing. You guys are the perfect embodiment of it. Before we talk about it, let's kind of flip the tables a little bit, though. I, I want Ronnie, I want you to tell me what makes Eddie such a good friend, and not just to yourself, but to other people. And then Eddie, do the same thing about Ronnie. So, Ronnie, go. Oh, this is an easy one. Uh, you know, quite frankly, to, to, to find at least one friend in your life, that you can truly depend on and trust. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do because it requires vulnerability. It requires the ability to trust someone with not only the parts of you that you celebrate, the light parts, but that you also trust them with the darkness as well. We're all capable of light and dark, and we all have challenges um, at times. And the greatest thing about Eddie is that the way he shows up in the world is just, you know, it's so loving and at times there's a naivete about it, but it's a beautiful naivete. It, it's a, he hasn't been jaded by, you know, some of the challenges he's had to overcome in his life. Um, he's still moving forward and going strong. He learns, you know, you know, he's, he's a, he's a consummate learner. Like he's always educating himself. You know, he's always learning. He's one of the most loyal people I've ever met in my entire life. Um, and more than anything, he makes me laugh. You know, life can be a comedy or a tragedy, but, you know, when, when, when shit hits the fan, like, Eddie's always able to find the humor. And one of the things I love the most is, is he, we give each other shit, you know, because we can. We've given each other <laughs> the, uh, the right to do that because we love each other. And we poke right. fun at each other and we point things out. And uh, he has this way of observing people's body language and their quirks, and he finds funny ways to play it back to them, and not in a, in a way that, that puts them down, but that just helps them see the beauty of everything that they bring to the table. And, you know, quite frankly, my life changed for the better the day he walked into it, and I'm forever grateful and we've barely scratched the surface of this friendship and our working relationship and, and the good we want to do in the world and, and, and what we want to do to inspire others to go after their dreams the way we're, we're doing it. So um, just very Love that. All right. Your turn, Eddie. Wow. Um, well, this, uh, you know, with Ronnie, um, I think one of the greatest assets that Ronnie brings to, to the table is, is his genuine care, his love for other people. Um, he's, he invests, uh, he's not one of these people that just listens to you and moves on. Um, he's probably one of the most loyal individuals I've ever, ever met in my life. And he doesn't, everything he does is unconditional. There, there's no terms. There, there's no payment. Um, when Ronnie does something for somebody, he does it from his heart. And he has a way of bringing you in. Um, he knows, he, he knows people very well. He sits back, he watches, he can almost verbatim tell what a person's going through. And he knows right then and there what to say and what to do. And he and, and, and when he sees that, he's not, you know, because a lot of people, will, you can tell somebody's having a bad day or somebody's hurt, and you either get invested or you get invested in, in wanting to know if you can help, but it's one of those things, you know, are ah, you all right? And then if they say no, it's like, oh, God, do I have to put up with this? Um, Ronnie doesn't do that. Ronnie genuinely invests himself into that situation, and, and he follows through. Um he took on, I'm not an easy person to deal with <laughs> uh, by a long shot. And um, 
I think the greatest thing I, I've, I've come to find, because I don't think, I, I have great friends, don't get me wrong, but I've never had a friend like this. And he sticks by me, where other people, you know, he, he was able to peel back those things and, and show me it was okay to be me. And being me, and, you know, some people are very cruel, he, he knows the right thing to say. He knows the right thing to do. And, and people across the board are, are so inspired by him. And he's not afraid to share himself with the world. He's not afraid to, to show, you know, a lot of people look at Hollywood. They look at people like us and they, they say, oh, they're just the red carpets and their party. And so Ronnie made it okay to say, this is who I am. And this is the other side of me. And, and it's related to so many people because more important him than myself, um, seeing somebody of his caliber and, and seeing that vulnerability has changed lives for so many people. And he inspires everyone he gets. He, he really does. When, when somebody's doing something and he tells you, oh my God, that's amazing. He really means it. He's behind it 100%. And when you walk away, you, if you felt like 100% just confident, you now feel 350% confident because he's raised the bar for you. And he, it's just the way he is. And it's all natural. And, it, and it's, I, I couldn't ask for a better friend. I just want a group hug so bad. You I'm, writing the, I'm, I'm, telling you I'm writing the check as we speak. How many zeros do you want, Eddie? I just want I a want group a hug. That is so sweet, you guys. That's fantastic. Oh, we have so much to talk. Okay, let's go to Friend Moving here now. You guys, it's going to have a four-year anniversary in July. So I definitely want to talk about the different programs. You have Art with Heart, Letters to Our Former Selves, um, the Friends with Benefits. Um, let's talk about this Saturday. I watched your guys' videos Saturday from the casino, sorry to say. Um, but I was watching you guys with your project. This. Let's talk about this for a second. You have... Friendly Meals, and I want everyone to know about this so we don't run out of time. You guys do this on approximately the third Saturday of every month. You provide food, water, supplies to areas homeless or less advantaged. And with just a $5 donation, you can do this for four people. And I just think this is a fantastic deal. You're trying to spread it. I want to lead the charge here in Cleveland or Pittsburgh when you start to expand it. But let's talk about some of the programs and friend movement. Well, well it's interesting because at Friend that. Movement, at Friend Movement, we um, we see ourselves as a uh, a multimedia arts uh, and events organization as well as a community projects oriented uh, company as well. Um, so, in the community uh, projects division, you know, we're spearheading um, friendly meals, and that is to address the fact that there's nearly 60,000 homeless people in the Los Angeles, greater Los Angeles area on the streets at any given time, which breaks our hearts. And, you know, we go out there and we bring people from all walks of life in our friend group, from lawyers, doctors, business executives, network uh, developers, uh, artists, uh, you know, nurses, I mean, everybody, all shapes, sizes, genders, creeds, colors, they all come together to MacArthur Park once a month. We get together early in the morning. We make and make our peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We'll add a fruit and a snack. We've worked with other companies um, like Modern Oats before that has contributed some product as well and Diabolo. Um, but we get together out of love and friendship, and we go out to the park, and there is no greater feeling than going and handing a lunch to someone who is either homeless or underserved. And the, the, the way their eyes sparkle, the way their eyes and their face light up with such a simple gesture, something as simple as just a meal to eat, it really puts things in perspective. And beyond that, our friend family has left doing friendly meals saying that they'll never ignore another homeless person ever a day in their life. Even if they can't help them with anything, they're going to say hello to them. And that's because we're seeing these people as people, people that have just are hard on their luck. They're down and out. Something happened. You know, in this economy, we're all, you know, many of us are one paycheck away from being on the streets. You know, it's a challenging time. And right. But these are people with stories, and these are good people. 
and many of them are challenged with mental disabilities as well, and they need special care. Um, but walking away, you know, from this every month, you know, we are so supercharged and we're so grateful because it's so true. Never underestimate, you know, the ability of a, you know, a small group of like-minded people that are dedicated and committed to changing the world. In fact, it's, it's the only thing that ever does. You know, the impossible is only impossible until you do it. And we couldn't be, you know, running this program without the love and support of our friend family who give up their Saturdays, they get up early, you know, they could be doing so many other things, but they choose to come because they're not only giving back, but they're getting something. They're having a good time, they're laughing, and they're enjoying themselves. And that's only one program. I mean, we're looking to do art therapy programs, workshops for those in need to help them get through challenges and to heal. You know, we want to go into nursing homes and we want to entertain since we have so many actor friends. We want to go into children's homes, you know, those that, you know, are suffering from cancer, but, you know, they still have this bright outlook on life. We want to go and make their lives better. Um, at the end of the day, friend movement is for everyone. Just because Eddie and I happen to be gay, we don't define ourselves by our sexual orientation. There's so much more to us and there's so much more out there to explore in life. So friendship. Having a dialogue about friendship, and this is where I'll leave it because I'm, I'm getting a little long-winded, but um, at the end of the day, friendship, the most important friendship you can have is with the man or woman staring back at you in the mirror. And it's funny, it's taken me 33 years to get there, and I'm finally having my breakthroughs. But if you really don't love yourself, it is truly impossible to love anyone else. You've got to be able to love yourself and not just say it. You've got to figure out what that looks like for you. And each of us it's different. You know, we have to find that ourselves. We talk That's about awesome. it a lot. We have to really act it. We have to really act it. All right. Well, this is going to be part one of a two-part interview because we have five minutes left, which I can't believe. Eddie, let's go really quickly into the Ronnie and Eddie show. I'm so excited to be part of this campaign. I love that you guys raised your goal in going into that. Um, the video was fantastic. I love the way it was written, the way it was shot. Where are we at now? you got a couple of producers and directors on now, or where are we going from here? We do. We have, Ronnie, I think, what is it, four? four uh, we have four producers. Um, we are working with Vertex Media, um, which uh, we're real excited about. And right now, uh, it's just really getting, um, we're getting the treatment finished up. And hopefully here in the next couple of weeks, we get started on, um, we get started on shooting. So we're real excited about it. Uh, we really think the premise of the show and, and what it is that we're trying to to bring, it's not going to be your typical reality show. It's it's going to have it's drama. It's going to have some feel good in there. Oh, girl, there's going to be plenty of drama. <laughs> I'll tell you about that. <laughs> I say every day there's not a camera on us. Every day there's not a camera on us. We're we're missing out. Everyone's missing out. <laughs> oh, Are you guys yeah. looking to shoot network? Or are you guys looking to do web series? Uh, you know, um, we'd love to do network. We'd love to do network, but we're open. You know, a lot of people are getting their content, you know, streaming it um, on a lot of different distribution channels online now, too. Right. I think and the greatest thing is is in every one of, um, every one of our episodes, we figure, and, and we're determining how many episodes really it's going to take, is, is being able to take somebody else that is just having trouble getting their dreams brought forward and working together with our team of, of individuals and our connections and the, the huge roster of people we have um, that, that, we've met, that we have connections with and bringing their dreams to life. So, it, yeah, I mean, know, the Ronnie and Eddie show, the Ronnie and Eddie show is going to have plenty of drama because we have drama in our everyday lives, but it's full of heart. Sure. You know, you're going to see Eddie and myself going after our dreams behind the smoke and mirrors of Hollywood, what it really means to make something happen and make something of yourself in this crazy town, um, you know, which is not easy. But you're also going to see the challenges of being entrepreneurs, building a business, the highs and lows. And as Eddie said, you know, our goal is to help other people realize their dreams, too. So there's going to be an element to the Ronnie and Eddie show that will allow viewers from around the world to submit themselves and their friends 
and family to be considered, uh, you know, for Ronnie and Eddie to help their dream come to life with our friend family. Well, that is awesome. Guys, I'm going to have to cut it short. We're definitely going to have to go to round two. We didn't get to talk about swimsuit centerfold. I want to talk about long grief and your battle plan sound. I want to talk about your friends with benefits that's launching in June. You guys are doing such great work. I wish I was out in California. I would want to be on the board. I'm telling you this. I think you guys are just amazing. But we'd love to have you. Uh, well, you know, it, it, it takes a village, and, and we thank you for helping to share our story because every one of these moments where we get to share, you know, we're so grateful. And uh, none of this would be possible, you know, without um, those who have believed in us, you know, from day one. You know, special shout-out to our family, um, to our friends, and, and to, um, to everyone that's given of their time and their hard-earned dollars. Because, you know, Eddie and I have put a lot of our own finances um, and sweat equity into this. Um, But after nearly almost four years, you know, we sit back and we almost have to pinch ourselves. We get chills because to see it come to life the way it is, even larger than we could have ever dreamed, it's a blessing. And we love each and every one of you that are listening. And a special thank you to you, you know, for, uh, for this opportunity. Well, it's my pleasure. I hope we get to know each other better. We have your social media for Twitter. We've had it thrown throughout the show on there. Uh, we left some chat, some questions in the chat room we'll have to get to next time. It's friendmovement.com. Um, do you have anything for the, uh, the Ronnie and Eddie show yet? Any social media for that yet? Besides, uh, You can go to Ronnie and Eddie on Facebook, and, okay. and you can like us there, and, and soon the website will be coming to you for that. All right. Well, this is Scott Fullerton for Left of Straight Show. I definitely need to thank my guests, Ronnie Kroll and Eddie Lobo. Next week, we'll be back with the fantastic actor and director, Emerson Smith. See you next week. Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBN Radio.